Welcome back to Homesteading with the Zimmermans, where we work hard and play hard on our little corner of land in Iowa. My husband and I were born and raised Old Order Mennonite, or Horse and Buggy Mennonite, as some refer to them as. And although we are no longer part of that culture or community, we are intentional about passing on the old-fashioned skills of our childhood to the next generation. Good morning. It is filming day. And like usual, that means that I can make something that serves the family's needs and slow down a little bit and film it for YouTube as well. So today we are making my grandma's recipe of cinnamon rolls, which in our family cookbook, we all label as Amish buns because my grandma got the recipe from her Amish neighbor years and years and years ago. So you might be wondering what potatoes have to do with making cinnamon rolls, but my recipe calls for mashed potatoes. And I will um, explain what the mashed potatoes have to do with um, the recipe in a little bit but as of right now I gotta get these potatoes cooking so I can mash them so that I can get my ingredients all mixed together and get my bread dough right or my cinnamon roll dough rising so when you're adding potatoes to a yeast recipe what you're adding is a lot of starch and what starch does to a yeast dough is it helps the dough retain its moisture. And when you have a yeast dough that is able to retain a lot of moisture, you end up with a softer, fluffier end product that has a much longer shelf life and it freezes better. And it's just a much fluffier dough and end product all around. potatoes are soft you want to just mash them up until they're smooth and you'll want to leave all the water in there because that's what contains most of your starch and potassium so in the past when I have needed to cut corners in making my cinnamon rolls I have used instant mashed potatoes and your results, your end result will be very, very similar. Um, but this using real mashed potatoes is what tastes most like my mom and grandma's cinnamon rolls. So now I'm just going to put these in the refrigerator and let them cool down because I don't want to add them to my dough while they're hot because they could kill the yeast. And I decided that cooling the potatoes outside in the 20 degree weather would be faster and more economical than using the refrigerator. So while my potatoes are cooling, I'm going to get my dough started. So I've got four cups of warm water and I'm adding four tablespoons of yeast. And then I'm also going to add two tablespoons of sugar. And I'm just going to let that set for a couple minutes and give the yeast a chance to dissolve and become active. So once my yeast is foaming and activated, I'm going to add eight cups of flour. Now remember, I'm of course making a double recipe. There's our eight cups of flour, and we're just gonna mix that in really well. So 
So once you've kneaded that water and yeast and flour together until it starts looking nice and smooth, I'm going to cover it and we are going to let it rise until it is double. And about at that same time, the potatoes should be cool enough and we will be able to continue with our recipe. Now remember, um, I am making a double recipe. The recipe that is linked in the description will be a single recipe, which is still very, very much a family size recipe. I'm making a double recipe because I want to freeze some cinnamon rolls for our daughter's bridal shower and possibly I will have enough left to give away as Christmas gifts. So that's why this is a double recipe. Well, that happened very quickly. That was about 10 minutes and it is double. So we need to hurry up and get the rest of our ingredients added. So I need four cups of mashed potatoes. Just walk into the chicken house to see if I can find one more egg. All right, let me see what you got under there. No. No eggs. Well, unfortunately, I did not find one more egg. So we're just going to make our recipe with nine eggs instead of ten today. So next we have to beat all of those eggs and add them to our potatoes. Okay, I've added my two tablespoons of salt and now I'm adding my two cups of melted butter. And we're going to mix together these enrichment ingredients. We're going to mix these all together before we add them to our dough. So I somehow missed filming this part, but this is also where you would add your two cups of sugar or one cup if you're making a single recipe. So my dough is growing very, very fast and I'm just gonna start my mixer and mix this down before I add all my enrichment ingredients. So now to this, I need to add another 12 cups of flour. I'm actually really second guessing myself about making a double recipe because I have this sinking feeling that I'm going to be making cinnamon rolls for the rest of the day. <laughs> and which isn't a problem except our freezers are completely full of meat. Um, however, I need to get 12 cups of flour in here. I obviously won't be able to fit it all into my mixing bowl. So I'll have to do some kneading by hand, but I'm going to add everything that I can to the mixing bowl and let the mixer do as much of the work as possible. So that's four cups. Better put the lid on or it's going to go everywhere. Okay, so that makes 10 cups. Okay, so this is 12 cups. I'm gonna see what my mixer does with this. So I think I'm going to actually add a little more flour because that will make it a little easier for the mixer and it's still pretty sticky. So I'm going to get all this dough out and I'm just going to finish kneading it by hand until it is the texture that I want it to be. Need 
paint it all over your your counter and then the top part is going to look smooth so i've got my biggest stainless steel bowl and i'm just gonna put some flour all around that i'm gonna put this big chunk of lovely dough right in the center and then I'm going to sprinkle the top lightly with flour and then I'm going to cover it with this wax wrap from Prairie Bee Wraps and I will link this. I will link the Prairie Bee Wraps. I don't have an affiliate or anything. They're just a small family owned business. Anyway, so now we're just going to the reason you cover it is because yeast dough rises best um, with humidity. So when you cover it, you are trapping all that humidity in there. The other thing that yeast dough needs to rise is heat. We're also rendering tallow today. So I'm just gonna put my dough right next to the tallow. And then from experience, I know that I need to hustle and get all my other ingredients ready, like the cinnamon and sugar and butter mixture that I put on the cinnamon rolls and all the pans because this is gonna rise fairly rapidly. So now I'm going to boil together some butter, milk, and sugar. And I will include this recipe in the description as well. And after this is boiled together for a couple minutes, we are going to layer it in the bottom of a couple of my pans. And we're gonna layer pecans in as well. And this will turn a plain old cinnamon roll into a sticky bun. All right, guys, our dough has definitely doubled in size. And we are ready to make some cinnamon rolls. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to deflate my dough. Then, I'm gonna make sure we've got flour so we're not sticking to everything. So I'm gonna start working with a small portion because I wanna roll this out very, very thin. So once you've got your dough spread out as thin as you want it, I like mine very thin, then you're going to be very generous and spread butter all over the surface of that thin dough, making sure to get all the way out to the edges. After you've got the butter on, then you're going to be real generous with your brown sugar layer and then put a nice amount of cinnamon over top of everything else. So now you are ready to create the magic that is the cinnamon roll. And what you're going to do is you're gonna start at the long edge and just gently tug up the dough and start rolling it. Making sure to pull your roll tight each time. See how I scoot it back a little bit and make sure that the roll is very snug. I've got this little um, piece of thread that I'm gonna use to cut my cinnamon rolls. You could use um, dental floss, but the only dental floss I had was um, mint flavored, and I didn't want to use that, so it's just plain old thread from my sewing machine drawer. Mm -hmm. 
so if you've ever cut cinnamon rolls or any kind of yeasto with a knife then using a string the way I am is going to make perfect sense with you but basically what I'm doing is keeping the cinnamon rolls from getting smashed out of shape by pressing down on them with a knife So one of the things about making a double batch like this is that your dough seems to keep growing while you're working and I anyway tend to lose my focus before I'm done. But I'm almost done. And here you can tell the thinner you roll your dough the more space for that buttery goodness you're gonna have. So how cinnamon rolls became a Christmas tradition for our family is my family loves cinnamon rolls, but I don't really love to make cinnamon rolls. So every time they'd ask for cinnamon rolls, I'd say maybe at Christmas time. So I rarely make cinnamon rolls for them when it's not Christmas. All right, that fills up my last pan. <laughs> so once your cinnamon rolls have risen again to be about double in size, you wanna put them in the oven to bake them. Okay, so I always have a pan of misfits and this is where I put the ends in like the ends of my rolls that didn't get, well I filled it in with good, nice ones, but like see the ends of my roll, always go into a Misfits um, pan and then we eat those first. So I baked my cinnamon rolls in a 350 degree oven and it took them about 25 to 30 minutes to be all done, but that will, that time will largely depend on how big you made your cinnamon rolls. But anywhere from 15 to 35 minutes is probably in the right range. So here you can see what happens when you place your cinnamon rolls too closely together in the pan and then they don't have anywhere to go to expand when you bake them and then they pop up out of the center. Also, this is exactly the color I like to see them. I like to see them just a little tan over the top. And then I know that they've been baked long enough. So then of course, the pan full of misfit cinnamon rolls is also the pan that we sample. And we put all the perfect ones in the freezer for gifts and for Christmas morning. Well, there is all the cinnamon rolls. Um, this is actually not even all of them. Stacy and her fiance Johnny already took two pans that are for the bridal shower to the church freezer. And this is the pan of misfits that I have put some cream cheese frosting on. And these, Stacy and Johnny and I have already eaten some of these. And the rest we're saving for the kids when they come home from school. And so what I'll do, these are the sticky ones. And I'm going to wrap these all up and put them in the freezer as soon as they are room temperature. And then on Christmas morning, which cinnamon rolls is our traditional Christmas morning treat, 
um, I will defrost them Christmas Eve. I'll put them out on the counter and defrost them. And then Christmas morning, I will just pop them into the oven after our breakfast casserole comes out. I'll turn the oven off and pop these in and just make them lovely and warm. And then I'll frost them, put some cream cheese frosting on them. And the kids, the family will feel loved when they eat these cinnamon rolls. If there is one thing that will bring my adult children home for Christmas, I believe the number one thing might be cinnamon rolls. There might be other food that brings them home and I'm sure that family relationships will draw them home too. But a lot of the credit to bring those adult children home for Christmas goes to those to these cinnamon rolls and sticky buns right here now it is about two o'clock so if you're used to working with yeast dough you know that it is somewhat of a taskmaster um, it keeps you on your toes you can't say oh i'm gonna take a little rest and then i'll make those cinnamon rolls when the dough says it's ready then you make cinnamon rolls um, now my mom and grandma, when they made cinnamon rolls, they would get up and get it all done and have it rising while we ate breakfast. And then right after breakfast, it was ready to roll out. Um, but I didn't wanna make that much noise this morning at 4 a.m. Um, and mix this together. So I chose to get started later in the day, but that's okay. Now the cinnamon rolls will be warm and ready for the school children to enjoy when they come home. I mean, look at this, how beautiful are those? So in case anyone is wondering why I'm not wearing my usual ruffle apron, it's because my blue one was dirty and I'm highly suspicious that the little boys took my red one and wrapped it up for a Christmas gift to me because there's a suspicious package with my name in their writing under the tree and it feels soft like it might be an apron. So I have a feeling that's where my red apron was that I washed purposely for filming day. We have also made our favorite sugar cookies this week and this recipe works beautifully for making those shaped and cut out cookies. Um, I have put a link to this recipe in the description along with the frosting that we use and all the tips for getting perfect cut out cookies. Oh, and we cannot forget to show you our favorite Christmas candies that we make. We start with a pretzel and then a Rolo, and we put them in the oven at 250 degrees for about five minutes. And then we put a pecan on top of each Rolo, and then we chill them, and we store these in the refrigerator we have been busy making pies. We've got a family reunion coming up. So some of these are going into the freezer and some of them are for our family Christmas.